All right, one of you let me know about this Legacy Standard Bible by John MacArthur, and I'm probably going to do a video on this, you know, go through this whole thing point by point. But uh, I need to explain something about John MacArthur. All right, um, I've heard of this guy, studied his stuff for a long time. I have, if you can see on the shelf back here behind me, I have a brother sent me all of his commentaries on the entire New Testament. I have the MacArthur Study Bible here. There's two of the commentaries. People have sent me John MacArthur's stuff for years. I was given his books over the years. Uh, one from a, my older brother for Christmas or something, I think it was. And uh, so I'm not ignorant of the guy. I've read a lot of his different things and whatever else. Not everything, because I can't stomach everything that the guy, that very much of the guy. It just irritates me. Um, he is what would be called uh, sort of a Alexandrian line of thinking uh, the modern manuscripts that, that come from the Vatican, the Nestle's text, basically. I'll get a little bit more into that as we continue here just to explain it to people that are newly saved or if you're ignorant of this issue. There are two different Bibles. Okay, The ones go back to the Antioch, Syria. The others go back to Alexandria, Egypt. He's a defender of the Alexandria, Egypt type. Says that they're better than the King James Antioch Syrian line. I would vehemently disagree with that. Um, but what these guys do, they make a living deceiving people. They will talk all about the Bible and then recommend different versions. They do not believe in any Bible being perfect or inerrant. And all of them, without exception, get to a point where they'll either they write commentaries first and then they'll get to a point where they have to retranslate the Bible because they have no higher, higher authority or standard on the earth than themselves. That's why they'll constantly go through the Bible, or a Bible that they use in their ministry, which he uses, the New American Standard Bible, coming out again as the Legacy Standard Bible. He uses that, and yet he'll correct and say a better translation, a different translation should be, and, and they'll talk about the original Greek and the original Hebrew, um, thereby leading and deceiving people to think that they actually have access to the original autographs. They use this deceptive language, what is what they do to control people, to to you know manipulate the masses into getting money. And that's what these guys are professionals at. They're professional con men. Okay? Um, I'll just give you an example here in this MacArthur Study Bible right here. New King James Version. You can see it there. MacArthur Study Bible. Okay? Um, here we have Mark 16, 9 through 20. The external evidence strongly suggests these verses were not originally part of Mark's gospel. While the majority of um, Greek manuscripts contain these verses, the earliest and most reliable do not. He's referring to Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Okay? He won't tell you that, but... Uh, He'll just let you believe that, uh, oh, we found better ones and they're more accurate and better and everything else. You know, yeah. Down here again, um, Mark 9, verses 44 and 46. The better Greek manuscripts omit these verses, which merely repeat the quote from Isaiah 66, 24, found in verse 48. So the better Greek manuscripts. Again, this is not the New American Standard Bible that he prefers. This is the New King James Version, which he lies in one of his videos and he says I've always you know I've never used anything but a new American Standard Bible he's a liar then why would you make a commentary on the new King James but you know the new King James puts verse uh, 44 and verse 46 in Mark chapter 9 in and he says well better manuscripts admit these verses kind of weird but uh, I'll show you another one here here we have uh, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 3 his commentary down here um, right there in the fluorescent yellow area Let's see if I can get in there probably not going to be able to see it too good you can pause that and read it hopefully that shows up the ancient Syriac Peshitta give gives a more accurate translation of what was intended by the Greek phrase whose father and mother are not written in genealogies. Of course, it's, the whole thing's mixed up. It's not what the King James Bible says. 
destroying the fact that Jesus Christ is clearly being identified there as Melchizedek. And he gets it all mixed up with some other guy, you know, he's just like Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, you can watch my study on that on the my main channel um, on who is Melchizedek, how Melchizedek destroys the idea of the, the Trinity. But here's the whole point. He'll use the text of an English translation and then he'll correct it. Actually, a better translation would be, um, it could be better said this way. Well, think about this. Simple, basic logic. If this book right here is God's word, you can call it the divinely inspired and errant scriptures. If it's inerrant, then that would naturally mean that you can't correct it. Because if you can correct it, then it has an error. See how these snakes work? I believe in the inerrancy of scripture. What is the scripture that is inerrant? Hold it up. Let us see a copy of it. He doesn't believe in any such book. That's how these deceivers mess with people. Let's watch this video. It's just a short one. Let's get through this. <laughs> to a person who says that he is a Christian but denies the inerrancy of Scripture, uh, I would say uh, several things. You, you are denying God's own claim for the Bible. You are denying God's own claim for the Bible. What is the Bible that you're referring to? What is the Scripture that you're referring to? Please hold up a copy. Okay, this isn't the one here. This is the one over here. Okay, this is the Word of God, which John MacArthur rejects. You're, you're denying what God, the Holy Spirit, who authored Scripture, says about Scripture. That all. What does he say? Where does he say it? What Bible is the inerrant Scripture that can't be corrected? can't be said to be a better trans well a better way to say this he's got a commentary right here the macarthur study bible and in the his comments down below he's saying actually this the text he calls the text into question i showed you examples of it, a couple examples of it did go through this whole thing just pick again and again and again well the, the actual the, the tense on the verb here in the greek would be blah, blah, blah. well then the, the text is imperfect because you're correcting it in your commentary he doesn't believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. See, these guys are professional con men. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That every word is pure. That um, the, the Scripture is God-breathed. Not only that, not only... Now, you got to give him some credit. He really put emotion to that. God-breathed. <laughs> these guys have the little hermeneutic thing, you know, or the homiletics, not hermeneutic, homiletics, excuse me, the little oration thing that they study that you, you can't say the scripture is God breathed. You say the scripture is God breathed. I like that. You, know, you got to get the little thing in there. The word of God. Yeah. Those explicit statements are you denying, but you're denying every time in scripture it says, thus says the Lord. And yet, then you're denying the overall... <laughs> denying every time the scripture says, thus says the Lord. It's thus saith the Lord, but, you know, what's the scripture? You just make it up. Superintending power of God over his revelation. Now, what that does, essentially, is say this. You are the judge of scripture. <laughs> what that does is it says this. You are the judge of scripture. From a guy who's written a whole books and books and books, you know, First Timothy, first through third John, and back there that the brother sent me that whole shelf, the second row down there. It's all his commentaries. He is the judge of Scripture. You read through this thing, and a better translation would be actually the best manuscripts don't have this verse in it, and this better thing here, and that this the the, the tense of the verb is. See, again, understand the little mind control thing here. He's saying he's condemning people for doing what he has made a living doing. That's what these guys do. So people watch us and look at the sincere look on his face. You don't want to do this, friend. Friend. Just, you know. 
Oh, my goodness. You've just made yourself the authority over the Bible. So you're going to be the one we have to trust to tell us what's true and what's not true in the Bible. And here's the problem with that. <laughs> the problem with that is what, that's what you do, John MacArthur. If you deny inerrancy, the only reason you would ever deny inerrancy would be essentially to deny something in the Bible that you don't like. Or deny the whole Bible because you don't like the whole Bible, minister of Satan. And when you've done that, you've now said what the Bible says about that it can't be true. It's not true. Once, Like he just did it in Hebrews chapter 7. Without father, without mother, speaking about God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that, that can't be true. I'll just have to change that. It's actually actually more accurately translated in the, you know, the Syriac Peshitta or whatever. You know, I, I'll find another manuscript or I'll find some other kind of a way to continue. So you have broken the link in the chain. How do we know that anything is true? So when the Bible claims inspiration for all of it, and you break that, then where do you go? <laughs> Come on, man. You do it all through here. You do it all through here. You know? Let's just give you an example here. First John, chapter 5. What he says here about the Johannine comma. First John, chapter 5, verse 7. Some English versions, example given the KJV and NKJV, add between verse 7 and 8 the so-called comma Johannium. You know, then he goes into the thing, he, he gets into Bruce Metzger and whatever else, but he questions it. He says, uh, though what it teaches is true, the added passage itself is spurious. Uh, aren't you questioning the authority of Scripture, the King James Bible? Isn't he questioning that? Here's another good one. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. <clears throat> um, uh, the authorized version opens the hymn with God. The earliest and best manuscripts, however, read Hos, he, who, not Theos, God. Right there, page 139 calls into, into question the text of the King James Bible. Isn't any undermining people's faith in the Word of God? You get somebody that reads the King James Bible and they think John MacArthur sounds good because they're deceived by him and they go and they get this uh, thing right here, First Timothy Commentary and they read it and they say, oh, actually the authorized version my King James Bible is in error in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I guess it must not be God's Word anymore. And who do they start trusting in? Let's continue. How do you trust any of it? For you could you could start, for example, say, well, I don't believe Genesis one and two. I don't believe in a six day creation. I believe in some kind of evolutionary process. That's not in Genesis one and two. So the question is, if that's not true, what else isn't true? And who's the person that's going to tell us what else isn't true? And what that would be you, Johnny Boy, with all your commentaries and all your junk that you've written. There, there's some kind of a thing there that they're doing. That this this is probably called a narcissist or psychotic or I don't know what this is. You know, whatever. Somebody will put it in the comments. I'm sure um, where they actually come out and they condemn what they themselves are doing. They condemn it at other people. Crazy. What isn't true is hiding something that is true, and where do we go for that? You literally unravel the scripture if you deny its inerrancy. Unravel the scripture if you deny its inerrancy. Well, that's what you do for a living, John MacArthur. You lying snake, you. But, you know, you go down through this whole thing here, the Master's University, uh, you know, no, no arrogance there. It's, you know, God is, you know, Lord Jesus Christ is the master. The, you know, one is your master, and it's, it's his university. 
my goodness. And they're using the New American Standard Bible, and they're, they're redoing it here, you know, like we need another translation. You know, give me a break. And uh, by the way, I'll get more into this when I actually cover this video. But uh, just to show you here, um, yeah, this is the 28th. This is the Texas Receptus here in my right hand. And here is the Nestle's 28th in my left hand. Done that way on purpose. Um, two different Greek texts. John MacArthur champions this text that's based on less than 1% of extant Greek manuscripts, over 99% of extant Greek manuscripts. The received text. Yeah. You can trust him. I mean, he uses the, uh, the text that's used by the Vatican. It's put out by the Vatican. Uh, you can, but you can trust it. It's okay. Everything's fine. They have the better. God saw to it that the people who had the best manuscripts of the Bible are those that killed Christians down through the centuries and, and preach all the heresies of Roman Catholicism, which he purportedly stands against, but he uses their Bible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Second Vatican Council, I'll just read this real quick in closing. But since the word of God must be readily available at all times, the church with motherly concern sees to it that suitable and correct translations are made into various languages, especially from the original texts of the sacred books. If when the opportunity presents itself and the authorities of the church agree, these transma translations are made jointly with churches separated from us, they can then be used by all Christians. Page 112 of the Second Vatican Council. Let's see if I can get that on camera. Right there it is. Second Vatican Council. Um, it's time to make another translation, folks. People are going back to that King James Bible, and we just can't have that. We have to come out and say, well, the New American Standard Bible, the sales are starting to plummet, so uh, what do we do? Let's come out with a new one. Yeah, that's what it's all about. This is God's book. God has blessed this. You don't need another one that's newer and whatever else and things. Don't need it. And again, you'll see in this video when I do a review of the whole thing, that he comes out and he, he flat out says, you know, that, that we don't need to change it. But uh, there are some things that need to be updated and whatever else. Totally contradicting the video that we just saw of him. And if you want to know more about John MacArthur, by the way, and the snake that he truly is, why is John MacArthur talking like Pope Francis? It's like eerie. He's just saying the same thing, you know, that the Pope says. John MacArthur attacked Oliver Cromwell in one of his sermons. You can hear that. John MacArthur refuting Mark Arthur's teaching on the church. I did that video as well. And then you get into some of this other stuff, MacArthur's Masonic Connections. Um, some really weird stuff there. I think it was his grandfather was a Freemason and, and some other things too. But uh, John MacArthur's Hypocritical Pagan Youth Movement. Again, check it out. The guy's a, a total lying hypocrite. You can see him preaching one thing and then doing something completely different at his youth movement. Stuff that he does. John MacArthur is a liar this man here will deceive you to take your money. Um, he's a servant of hell. Flee this man, get away from him.